What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Dolphins in Depth Podcast. I'm Daniel Yafusi. That is David Neal. Thanks so much for tuning in. Quick reminder before we start, make sure to subscribe to the Miami Herald YouTube page. Like, share, comment as well. Subscribe to the Miami Herald. Uh, now we are back for another episode. Uh, past the first wave of free agency, the last time we recorded, the Dolphins had made a couple moves. They made a lot of moves, a lot, a lot of more moves. Uh, since then, uh, the roster is starting to take shape. Uh, we got we got a we got a nice little you know free agency free agent class that we can start to break down. Um, the Dolphins even earlier today, uh, re-signing guys, bringing in some more guys, some competition, some potential starters. Um, and, and again, you know, it wasn't it was all doom, it was all doom and gloom in the early stages of free agency. Uh, but they've quickly worked to retool. Uh, the roster, we got a lot to break down uh, and look ahead to in this latest pod. Um, and we are going to start with, you know, analyzing this first wave of free agency because uh, it was a whirlwind. It, it really was. Um, long, long days, long nights, uh, recapping some Dolphins moves, you know, as early as 5, 6 in the morning, as late as midnight. But that's just what you signed up for when you're an NFL reporter. Um, but, yeah, the Dolphins were hard at work this past week. Um with various moves, they look to kind of retool this roster, um, kind of going straight into it uh, with some of the losses and then the additions. Um, as we mentioned before last week, uh, when we recorded, you know, some big names leaving the Dolphins, Christian Wilkins, uh, Robert Hunt, Raekwon Davis, Andrew Van Ginkle, Cedric Wilson Jr., uh, Brandon Jones, and Sean Elliott, a lot of turnover on the Dolphins roster. But uh, they've been active there themselves, like I said. Um, you know, dating back to even before the start of free agency, bringing in John U. Smith, Shaq Barrett, Aaron Brewer, Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker, Jordan Poyer, Saran Neal, Jody Fortson, and a host of defensive line. Five, to be exact, Neville Gallimore, Jonathan Harris, Benito Jones, Avea Mack, and Davion Nixon. Um, so the Dolphins are going to have a very different looking team, especially on defense. Um, I want to kick it off with you, David. When you look at the moves that the Dolphins made, some of the guys they lost, and just overall the work that they put in this first week, this first wave of free agency, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what grade would you give the Dolphins? Uh, and what was your maybe favorite move uh, in the first wave of signings? Uh, oh, yes, the lovely, uh, the bu- lovely and vaunted grades that, uh, that where we know where we give opinions that we never have to answer for when they're <laughs> monumentally wrong uh, months later. Um, I. You know what? I'll give them a B minus because they rebounded. They did what they needed to do. They filled some. They filled a lot of holes, and they filled them the way they needed to. Um, you know, they they were in a situation that they, you know, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get out of without some bruising, and you know they got bruised, but they did. They like said they filled filled holes. Probably my favorite move, I think, was probably the Kendall Fuller move. That mm. corner, I, I like I like that one. Um, and uh, you know it, you know, gives you two solid quarters again, two very good quarters. And um, uh, sorry, my my afternoon colada must have worn off. Um, the uh, you know two solid corners, and you know you need that in any defense uh, in the NFL today. And also, it's two versatile corners. Who can play in a lot of places? You can do a lot. You can just do a lot of things with them. So, um, yeah, that's that's probably my favorite move of the uh, of the many. Um, you know, the rest were. You know, there were some nice moves and some good good pickups. Um, it would be interesting to see how this shakes out because, yeah, there. I don't know that the Dolphins are as good defensively as they were before this all started, but I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's back to being good enough. Yeah. I was going to say, you stole the words right out of my mouth with the Kendall full sign. I'm, I'm going to give them a solid B. I think that you have to, I mean, you have to recognize the, the losses that they had, like on defense, that, that is significant turnover. And the names I mentioned didn't even include some of the guys that they released. Uh, before the start of free agency, and Emmanuel Agba and Xavier Howard, um, uh, Jerome Baker, like that's 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 like over a half dozen defensive contributors of the past year or so that aren't going to be back. 
So I think you have to kind of put that that like that's part of the grade. You know, they do they did lose some guys, um, but I think they did a really good job of of, of retooling. Like I think uh, when the the exodus first started, and you hear the games like Christian Wilkins, Robert Hunt, Deshaun uh, uh, Deshaun Elliott, uh, Brandon Jones. When you hear all those names, like and, and the Dolphins aren't really making moves, like you know, like you know, the first hour, it's like all right, like this is gonna be a reset year. And especially with the the cap situation that they had, like the they were you know shoot when the season ended, they were about forty fifty million dollars over the cap. Um, but they freed some, they freed a lot of space up. They're able to make some moves. And I think they they found some adequate, like I wouldn't even say like adequate. I'd say greater than adequate. You know, you can make an argument that they upgraded in some in some areas, but they certainly found some guys who can fill in those roles. Uh, you mentioned for that, that was probably my favorite signing as well. I um, mean, you mentioned the versatility. Like they have so many options. You know, I wrote about it today. Um, we actually spoke to him earlier today. Um, and he's a guy who started off as a, as a slot cornerback um, because that's what he was just kind of asked to do and had to do in Washington. Um, and then he himself said he thought he was kind of pigeonholed. So he goes uh, to Kansas City. He wins the Super Bowl there. And then he comes back for a second stint in Washington. And now he's playing, you know, outside cornerback as he did in college. And, uh, you know, he played some really good ball. I know that the raw stats aren't that great um, in terms of, you know, passer rating. I think he allowed a career high nine touchdowns last year. But that entire community defense was bad. Yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't, don't want to hold that on him, um, but you know you have a guy. He said like he said he wants to play everywhere. He's played outside, inside. He's played uh, safety as well. And then you have a guy like Jalen Ramsey who it looks like he's definitely going to move around, uh, unlike he did in under Vic Fangio and a new coordinator uh, Anthony Weaver already said that he wants to lean into that skill set. And then you got Kader Cole who's really like a nickel cornerback, but he's played some outside. They re-signed Nick and Needham. So like you have so many different options. Like I don't know if necessarily they're going to mix and match like every every game and whatnot but i think that the the versatility and that diversity of skill sets helps you win you know we know the nature of the nfl um you're gonna have injuries um you know guys are not gonna be in the lineup for 17 games so hey maybe you do let's say you know god forbid somebody goes down at nickel you've got two guys in kendall fuller uh and multiple guys honestly kendall fuller jay ramsey etc who can fill in you can mix and match um i think that diversity and that versatility will will suit them very well. Um, and, and I'm really interested in, we, we talked about it a little bit uh, last week, but I'm really interested in the Aaron Brewer signing because uh, mm-hmm. as more information comes out about Connor Williams' situation, it looks like, um, you know, Aaron Brewer is probably going to be the starting center. Now, when we spoke to him, um, you know, late last week, he said that, you know, that's pre- that's not predetermined, you know, it's still up in the air. Um, but he said himself that, you know, center is kind of his destined spot. You know, he's a bit of a smaller offensive lineman, um, 6'1", or so. 295 pounds like those guys don't definitely don't play tackle and we're seeing that a lot of times you know he, he has experience at guard but he played his entire last season at center where he kind of transitioned over um you know we've seen this 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 coaching staff get a lot out of you know um kind of unheralded um you know offensive linemen guys who are transitioning you know Connor Williams you know he had the best ball of his career playing um you know switching from guard to center um, and it looks like the athleticism really fits uh, the skill set, you know, w- with Aaron Brewer. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's a lot of guys. You know, we just sp- talked to Jordan Poyer. I think that that could be a great kind of savvy veteran signing, yeah. um, and somebody who you know they're getting a lot. They're getting a lot of a lot of experience in that in that secondary now. I think that the mix of that 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 veteran leadership, and then you have a guy like Javon Holland who's up and coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there's, there's a lot of potential with that group as well. And that's also something I think when you have, I think that's going to help with a new scheme um you know you're if you're an older guy strangely enough if you've been in the nfl for a while and you've been on a couple different teams and or even if you've just been on one team you've probably had to deal with a few different systems and you know how to adapt and uh, adaptability is you know the key to survival in a lot of what in a lot of places especially in the nfl and they're going to have to adapt to a new system. They're going to have to help bring these younger guys along who, you know, they had to adapt for like, you know, one year to Fangio system. And now they're kind of, okay, what next? Um, yeah, it's, I think there's also, I, I think there's all, I, I don't know. I think there can be some, they got good veteran. I think, good possible better in leadership also it's not like they didn't have it before but you know when you lose it they lost some of it and i think they got some back so 
you know, granted those guys haven't been here, but they are still guys who've been around this league for a long time. And, you know, I can't, you know, smart guys know, you know, know who to talk to and who to listen to uh, in the locker room. Even if those, some of the guys you listen to aren't the guys who always speak up, uh, you, you know, you know, when they speak, you might want to hush up and listen. And, you know, I, so yeah, like I said, I, I greater would be my issue greater would be they they look they look better than you know maybe we thought they would you know a week ago, and um, yeah, let's see what let's kind of see what happens now going into the yeah. draft. Yeah, you mentioned um, the, the leadership aspect. You know, I wish I could like find the tweet and credit whoever put it together. Um, but it was like, you know a Dolphins fan, and you had a picture of a uh, um, Kendall Fuller, Jordan Poyer, and Anthony Walker, the inside linebacker who signed for the Browns as well. And all three of those guys had a C on their on their jersey for captain. Uh, so they're definitely adding some some veteran leadership as well. Um, and then you mentioned you know kind of that helping the transition. You know, that was something that Jordan Poyer talked about a lot. He's like, hey, you you know. It's going to be a lot of turnover and a lot of new phases and a lot of work to be done. But that's what the OTAs are for, what the training camp is for. And I think that having a lot of those vets in there could definitely, um, you know, lessen the learning curve. So we'll definitely see what happens when uh, they all come together for spring uh, for spring workouts and then obviously training camp in the summer. All right, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back on the other side of things, um, are the Dolphins actually a better team after the first wave of free agency? Uh, and are they in a position where they can just kind of go best player available in the draft, target certain positions? Uh, we're going to discuss that and more on the other side of things. So stay locked with us. We'll be back soon. What's going on, everybody? Still here on the Dolphins in that podcast with David Neal talking all things Dolphins. Now the first half, uh, we broke down the Dolphins' first wave of free agency, uh, which was, again, like I said, a whirlwind of oh, seven days of departures, additions, resigns, and it continued um, even today with the team. Uh, officially re-signing Isaiah Wynn. He started seven games at left guard. They brought in Jack Driscoll, former Eagles offensive lineman, uh, who has uh, 17 games of experience. Um, they're bringing in got more offensive linemen and players for visits. Um, so they're continuing uh, to kind of turn every stone uh, for additions. Uh, the draft is about a month away or so, maybe five weeks away. Um, and that seems to be what, what's going to be an active weekend for the Dolphins, maybe the first in a couple of years, because as we know, the Dolphins have uh, made a habit of trading their first round picks, trading some of their high picks. But right now, they look, they look, or losing boys. them, <laughs> or losing them. That's a good point. You know? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point. Um, they, they I was going to say, they, they have a third round pick this year that's, uh, uh, that's forfeited as well. But, um, you know, they look like they're poised to, to use some high draft picks for the first time in a couple of years. But before we really get into that, um, you know, we, we talked about some, we broke down some of like our our favorite moves from the first half. But I really want to uh, for the first wave of free agency. But I really want to get into like the nitty gritty. Like, is the team better? You know, we gave grades, but I want to really break it down. Um, because again, I think the Dolphins have had some. They found a really good value. I think I think that's the best way to describe uh, their start to free agency. They've had they found a really really good value. Like you look at some of these contracts um, that they've given out. Um, you know, they've been very meticulous and careful with. Um, Kind of the guarantees after the first year, um, adding void years to kind of spread out um, the, the cap hits and whatnot. Um, and, but, but I think that when I look at the the team as currently constructed, and again, there's several months until you know the final iteration of this team or the 2024 iteration of this team really takes shape and uh, plays games that really matters. Um, but I look at the Dolphins free agency through the lens of what kind of sh- what kind of failed them last year, um, which I think was kind of the trenches. I would, I would say definitely the trenches um, on either side of the ball, you know, whether it was offense, not being able to, you know, run block against some of the better teams, pass protect for long moments against some of the better teams. And I look on the other side of the ball, you know, the pass rush kind of failing them, um, obviously with the injuries. Um, and I don't know if the the additions yet have been marginal, have been significant enough to say that they've like marginally improved like have they and obviously you know other teams are losing players or adding players as well but i just kind of look at the dolphins you know in, in a vacuum um i'm still not sure if they've gotten better there now i will say on the offensive side of the ball i think that um especially in the past 24 hours or even i could say 12 hours with uh you know the re-signing of isaiah win 
and um, the signing of Jack, Jack Driscoll, who, again, he started 17 games. Looks like he might compete at right guard. I feel a lot better about where the Dolphins are on the offensive line because they just have more depth. I don't know if they have, like, uh, they have more quantity. I don't know if the quality is, like, an overall upgrade. Um, but they have some guys in there that can at least compete and maybe be able to step in there and get the job done. Um, but I don't think that's a given. Like, I don't know if you can look at the five offensive linemen that they had last year um, or finish the season with and look at the five that they have right now and say that it's for sure a significantly better group. I look at the defensive side of the ball. Um, where I mentioned before, they brought in they brought in a lot of guys on the defensive line, but I don't know if, like, any of those – I'll say I don't think any of those guys is going to give you Christian Wilkins' production. And it doesn't look like they're trying to find one guy to replace Christian Wilkins. It looks like it's mostly going to be – which, yeah, which 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 makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> but but it doesn't look it doesn't even if it's a, by a committee approach. I don't know if you can say yeah the Dolphins off the defensive line is as good as it was last year. Like I don't know if you can say that even with even with the kind of the, the mass addition that they've made. Um, I mean, what what do you think about that? Especially like on on, on the offensive and defensive line. But I think that you know well, John D. Smith is is, a, is kind of a, a low value move, but it's something that you can get excited about because you know he's going to catch passes. Um, look at, you know, Jordan Porter. That's a familiar name that's produced. Um, but I think that really, again, what the Dolphins needed this offseason was to get better in the trenches. And I don't know um, if they've done it. That's not the only thing they needed well, to do. But I think that that's but, the most important thing. Well, and to break, to take your point even, you know, further, uh, is this group the group that on, what was it, third and one in the playoff game? Uh, is this the group that can just, you know, they, 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 that the coaching staff would feel comfortable just line up and saying, okay, we're just going to go get this yard because they clearly didn't feel comfortable doing that with the, with the group they had that they finished that was in the game at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And as you said, it's not, I don't, you know, I think it's also a stuff, you know, a type of a type of a mentality and a type of lineman. It, you know, it if you had a more physical line lineman who might not be as good a player overall, but is of a more physical type, you might, you know, there's a there's a push pull there that you might say okay you can live with that because you you know the dolphins need a you know they need a little more you know they a little more a little more road grader in the in the line i mean not yeah you know a little this little more push a little more physical a little more we're gonna get those yards when we need them and we're you know it's not just gonna be on you know so you know some type of running scheme that's a little deceptive you know it's not like their backs aren't physical they could they've got physical backs you know, um, but, you know, there is not a just straight ahead. Okay. We're going to get, we're going to get these couple yards that we really need. And as you said, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, nobody's going to replace Christian Wilkins. It's just, to I me, mean, that's, there's a reason Christian Wilkins got the money he got because there's not a lot of guys who can do what he can do. So, you know, he got the big bag and, uh, you know the dolphins are are now now have to you know deal with they're not you know the fact they're not going to get the same you know push in the on the pocket they're not going to get the same you know they're they're not going to create the same matchup problem inside uh does that mean they can't be better defensively no i mean they can be better defensively oh can they be yeah yeah i think they can be but to definitively look at the roster and say they are, mm, we can do that. Um, but I don't think they are. I don't think they are disastrously worse. Um, you know, they're probably in the same tier. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, it's, they're it's probably yeah, they're the ten, they're, 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 hover around good, ten win team. And it kind of yeah. depends on health, and you know, some guys, you know, staying healthy and which, uh, ex, you know, continuing to make ascensions. You know, some young guys which, stepping up, which is where you know the a large chunk, which is where a certain chunk of the NFL is. After you get past uh, the teams that you see as elite, and you know, yeah. the teams you, the teams you, if you, even if you look at now, are we at the point where I'm, where even if you look at Kansas City's roster and go, 
eh, you're still gonna we're still gonna put them in that group and say, yeah, they're they're an elite, they're probably an elite team until they show us they're not. I mean, you know, they 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 spent it seemed like they spent 15 16 weeks showing us they're not an elite team and but they're the ones holding the Super Bowl trophy again at the end of the season. So um so you know, uh, aside from that that small group up top where you've got you know, I don't know, three four teams where you look at their roster and you look at their setup and everything and you go, okay, that's, you know, that's a Super Bowl contending team. Then you have a good chunk of eight, nine, 10 teams that you go, yeah, if everything falls right, if everything goes well, you know, they get a career year out of somebody, you know, yeah, they, you know, they're a contender. And I think that's where the Dolphins are. And, but that, in that same, in that same tier, you know, you're two or three bad injuries from being, from having a lost season. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, the the, the way I see it is again, like what I've kind of mentioned before, you know, several times in the past, um, you know, I think on the defensive side of the ball, the significant amount of turnover is something that I, I still have my eyes on. Like, I don't, I know that Anthony Weaver comes very, um, he's very respected. He comes uh, very well regarded and recommended. Um, but we just don't know. Like, you, you just don't know how he's going to be. I mean, obviously, like, you know, I don't want to, I, I kind of discount the time that he spent um, it, with the Houston Texans in that one season. That was just kind of a mess of, of the season. I think this is going to be a little better of a situation in terms of personnel and kind of the overall environment. But we just don't know how somebody's like truly going to be in that role. Um, and then again, you, you just mentioned all of you guys. I mean, off the top of my head, um, they're probably going to have, you know, five or six new starters in there, like like day one starters. Um, still don't know about Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb. Obviously, they signed uh, Shaq Barrett, who I think could be kind of a sneaky move, kind of like a, a Melvin Ingram type of move a couple of years back uh, where he was, you know, at one point looked like their best pass rusher. Um, but i really like to see them get another one just to like, just to have like a, a solid kind of two-man rotation, like a, you know, a, first team, second team rotation of guys. Um, right. And, you know, Barrett kind of mentioned himself. He's like, hey, um, you know, if I got to hold it down until they come back, um, you know, great. And then once they get back, like, we're really going to be a well well or machine where you just kind of rotate guys. And so I'd love to see them um, add, um, you know, another another legitimate pass rusher, uh, maybe like a Jadavion Clowney or a Kyle Van Noy, um, two guys who are with We Run Baltimore. Um, those guys know the system could come in and, you know, again, they're not going to give you 60 snaps a game. Um, but in the early part of the season, they can give you a little something. And then once Phillips and Chubb get back, you know, you just rotate guys in there, you know, fresh bodies um, every now and then. Um, before we wrap, um, I want to kind of look ahead to the draft because, again, I mean, I think that the Dolphins' heavy lifting has been done. Obviously, they're going to get about $18 million in cap space uh, in June, the beginning of June, once the um, Xavier Howard cut um, kind of goes through in terms of the cap savings. Um, but has there has this first wave of free agency kind of changed um, the way you think the Dolphins should approach uh, the draft, because I'm kind of of the mindset that I would I would love for them to just like obviously I think that they, they usually do best player available, but I want to put a caveat on like I think that they're in a position where like you go best available trench player, you know if it's a guard, if it's a tackle, if it's a defensive lineman, I guess I'll even throw edge rusher in there because I know if there's some uh, there's some names that might be available at uh, pick number twenty one, I would love to see them do best player best trench player available. Uh, with that first pick, and then kind of go from there, um, and really, really solidify uh, this team that they put together. Yeah, they're, they're in a. I think they're in a position where they have to fill holes. Um, I, I, and I, know, I, mean, I don't can, know if they have, hole, I don't know if they have holes yet. I don't, I don't know if they have well, any well, holes remaining, well, except no, for no, defensive well, tackle. I would say. Let me tell you what: if if, if you're taking a player at twenty one, uh, he should fill a spot on your on your roster, and if he, if he's a trench player. If he's on the, if he's on either line, I should hope he could you know I should hope he could beat out who's there. You know if he can't, then why are you taking him? Why are you spending the first round pick on him? Um, you know if you're if you're down the if you're down the list uh, if you're down the standings, you know you take best player available because you have you know you need talent, you need ability, you and. You know, it really doesn't matter where where you have it, and if you have too much of it in one area, you try to trade it, whatever, for for something else. But, um, you know, the Dolphins are in a position where, yeah, you, you draft to need, and, um, yeah, I, you know, I, we, you know, like I said, it, 
I, you know, yeah, I'd love a, you know, a rookie with a, you know, kind of head banging, you know, uh, you know, whatever, you, whatever, you know, the old John Madden, you know, in the mud, blah, 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 you know, love, love to get out there and get, you know, get dirty and hard and hit and everything a mentality. Um, you know, I think that's needed definitely on the offensive side of the ball. Um, defensively, defensively, it's hard to pass up a good pass rusher. It, it if, if one's available, it really is hard to pass it up, and you can never have too many of them in the current yeah. NFL. Um, that that said, you know, teams have not exactly teams haven't completely abandoned the run. You know, despite. You know the teams are teams have run the, teams have actually run yeah, a lot more the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah, because teams have gotten you know it goes in cycles. So you cycle, got, yeah. you a bunch of you got coach creative coaches. They're like, hey, wait a minute, you know, hey, well, you know, okay, we got a quarterback who can you know dual threat quarterback. Everybody has one. It seems like it's well except for the Dolphins. And you know we you know, well we can you know we can make him a you know, runner and we he's a threat and you know we can do this with the running game. And so, but still in all. Um, like I've said before, I still it's I think it's too funny that Bill Walsh I think had it right a thousand years ago and it's still true today. You know, you want that pass rush late in the game, and if you don't have it, you're in trouble in most NFL games. And so, yeah, you want it. You know, a good pass rush is hard to pass up. But you know, that said, you know, if you if you get somebody who can you know stuff the run and or just wreck havoc inside uh you know even if they don't get you a lot of second they set the table for other people to get to the quarterback and they can scoop up the run yeah you need that kind of guy you need that kind of guy and um so uh yeah i, th- I agree well, with you, you know it needs what? to be it needs to be an inside an inside player and uh but they need to draft a need you can this is not a team that just oh let's just you know Oh yeah, well, okay. good they, they usually. There. Well, I was gonna. I was well. You just said so we got that. We got that telepathy. <laughs> I would not mind a wide receiver at twenty one. I would not mind a wide receiver at twenty one. I know that when you have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, that might seem more like a luxury, but I think that that would be a sneaky, interesting addition. Um, short term, long term, and I think you would fill a need. Um, I think that number three wide receiver is a, a is a bigger need than some people might think. Again, when you have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill taking up a ton of targets, I think it's a it's it's a sneaky it's a sneaky need for them. Um, I mentioned it before. Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle both have I, I don't want to say injury concerns, but they've dealt with injuries in their time in Miami. Um, the Dolphins limit their snaps a lot, so you have them on the sideline watching for. You know, they, they're, they're playing around 60% of the snaps where a lot of number one wide receivers, number one, number two wide receivers, they're playing just about every snap. The Dolphins don't do that. They rotate those guys in and stay fresh. Um, when you look at, um, obviously, you know, Tyree turning 30, uh, no more guaranteed money after next year. Again, he's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, but you just never know what happens when you turn 30. Um, Jalen Waddle, um, obviously, he's supposed to be a big part of their future. Um, but I think that this is a move where you could – you can kind of plan for the future, but also get, you know, immediate returns, especially because, you know, they're, they're running a ton of three wide receiver sets anyway. So it's not like there's, it's not like there aren't snaps for number three wide receiver, a first round pick uh, to get, you know, they re-signed Braxton Barrios, but uh, and I know, uh, I think Robbie Chosen visited the team, um, but, you know, Cedric Wilson signed us for uh, Robbie, uh, uh, River Craycraft, Chase Claypool, those guys are still free agents. Um, I think that there is a, there is a, I would say that number three wide receiver is a need if you want to categorize it uh, like that. It's not a need on the level of the other the, the, whatever else we just mentioned. That's a it's, it's that, not. That, it's that's not, that's, but again, that's a that, that's a later in the draft. This is a one. This is the first round pick. This, but is, this guy's going to be a star. And you all, wait a minute. You signed, I, I would say number you, 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 you signed. They signed John John o. Smith for the type of player he is. Like. I, they're going to want to give him you, the ball in, in space also. Let me give I mean, you a hypothetical. Gonna, what? Let me give you a hypothetical. The Dolphins are at number 21. You have the number four wide receiver on the board. Let's say it's, I guess in this case, it'd be like a Brian Thomas from LSU. 
Um, and, you know, I'm not getting into, like, no, we don't need to get into, like, the, the types of players they are. But let's say that he's the number four wide receiver on the Dolphins board. The defensive tackle of the draft is not the class that's not highly regarded. I think there's probably two guys who are for sure going to be first-round picks. And after that, it's kind of a crapshoot. So let's say the top two defensive tackles are off the board um, and you don't have the first-round grade on the next guy. Um, and some of the top edge rushers, pass rushers are off the board. Outside linebackers, those are not there. So if you're picking between like the, the fourth wide receiver who has a number one uh, uh, first round grade and maybe the third or fourth defensive tackle off, uh, outside uh, linebacker who you have a later grade on, are you still – are you sticking – because, again, the Dolphins usually go best player available. But are you bypassing that guy to take somebody who feels the need but maybe isn't as good, uh, you know, right now and the ceiling maybe isn't as high as well? What grades do I have in my offensive lineman? Ah, oh, man, you didn't mention that as well. I mean, hey, let's say it's the same thing. Let's, let's, say, let's, say, let's say it's just about even. Let's say it's just about even, but maybe he's a little, he's a little lower rated than the wide receiver, the number four wide receiver you have. It, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think that's, I think that's what it's going to look like. I think that there's going to be some, some fringe offensive line, pros- some fringe first-round offensive line prospects, pass rushers, and then you're going to have a really good wide receiver that might drop to you, you know, one or two that might be available at 21 that, hey, it's like, hey, we don't need a number one wide receiver, but we have a guy who can catch 50 passes, and those are going to be some really, really impactful receptions. And then in a year or two, he's my number one wide receiver. He's my number two wide receiver. I think that's the type of situation you're going to look at uh, when you have to pick a wide receiver uh, at 21 or if there is one available that you like at 21. Uh, I'm I'm still not uh, – I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan of it. I, I mean, this team. Yes, you have to slightly plan for the future. You, you definitely have to plan for the future. Obviously. I mean, I think you, I mean, you, like Chris you, Chris you, said, you always future, plan for the future when you make your moves. You right, you always plan for the future, but come on, you, you there's only you need to look at you know they need to look at right now. I think they need to look at Loman right now. And um yeah, I, I just let's address you know address your address your need. Um if you're if the players that address those needs that we discussed really are if you really have like a mid second round, low second round grade on them. And you're sitting there at one in the first round. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't want to over. You really don't want to overdraft that far. But you know, then you might then you might slap back and go, okay. You know what's our what's our next best player available? <laughs> you know what it's it's you know is it a linebacker? Is it a safety? Is it you know where where else are we? Um, you know. I can see you're thinking, and in, in a a thir- you know a first round pick as a third wide receiver, if he can play, you know, he probably playing in the slot, or or I mean, get, as you pointed out, they they rotate those guys in and out, so he's going to get his reps out on the outside. He's going to get his snaps on the outside. Maybe, but I I still like going for. I still like going for an aid and still like plugging the aids because I just I feel like you do you do that. Um yeah, you, know, you go you make a strong area stronger when you have holes that can be filled. I just think that's the type of thing that you that you might regret come about October. You know, and you're sitting there going, boy, me. Really wish we were better at that. Uh, we knew we really weren't. You know, we could have done something about that, but well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was just, gonna say October is around the time they start to lose Isaiah Wynn. Connor Williams went down. What an injury! So you know, you did. We did start to see that attrition early on the offensive line. And I don't. I, again, I don't think that the offensive line is a uh, a finished product by any means. Um, but I do think that wide receiver. I know. Uh, Barry, our own Barry Jackson, not too long ago, uh, tweeting out that number three wide receiver is very much a priority to some inside the Dolphins, and they're exploring all external options. I think that they're 
I think that there is some juice that you could add to this offense, an already really good offense, even though um, I don't I don't disagree with you at all that I think that the trenches still need to be addressed. Um, but it could be uh it could be an enticing option at number 21 for sure. So uh, we're still weeks and weeks ahead. The Dolphins are uh, deep into their uh, pre-draft process. They got coaches all across the NFL and pro days. I know UM just had uh, their pro day early Monday. Um, again, the draft in about a month. Um, so still could be some moves that the Dolphins are making for agency that shape the free agency, uh, the draft process. So we'll definitely see what happens between now and then. All right. That brings us to the end of another edition of the Dolphins of that podcast. I want to thank you guys as always for tuning in. Reminder to like, uh, subscribe to the Miami Herald YouTube page, like, share, comment, as well as subscribe to the Miami Herald. Uh, we'll be back that. next week. <laughs> that one, that one. Yeah. We'll be back next week. This time next week, uh, I'll be in Orlando, uh, headed up north for the owners' meetings. Uh, we're going to get a chance to speak to Mike McDaniel's first comments uh, since uh, the Dolphins' uh, mad dash and free agency. Uh, we'll get some comments on some incoming players and departing players. Uh, might get to talk to some uh, some coaches around the league. You know, the owners' meetings um, includes uh, the AFC coaches, a little breakfast brunch, whatever you want to call it, as well as the NFC coaches as well. Um, so we'll have a whole bunch of NFL dignitaries, I guess you could say, uh, in Orlando. Uh, and I'll be I'll okay. definitely, if, I mean, if you want to call it that, you know, uh, and I'll give you Muckety Mucks. Muck, mucking it up, yeah, I'll have the latest updates, Mucks, yeah. Uh, from the Dolphin side. Um, but until then, we'll see you next week. Until then, you guys take care. See ya. Yeah.